So, get this. A car that nobody could drive, now it comes with a steering wheel. It sounds like a joke, but that's exactly what happened when the new CyberCab prototype was spotted on the streets of California in 2026. And it wasn't just any amateur sighting. It was practically visual confirmation that Tesla's plan goes far beyond robo-taxes. What was once seen only as a vehicle for autonomous fleets has become a key piece in the puzzle of the highly anticipated Tesla Model 2. What's most striking? This design doesn't scream futuristic innovation. On the contrary, it whispers practicality. And that changes everything. Forget that overly ornate and conceptual look that only serves to attract investors at tech events. This new CyberCab has arrived with a look that suggests it's ready for the factory, not the stage. Solid paint, standardized wheels, without the exaggerated coverings of the first prototypes. And the most curious thing, the steering wheel is there. This raises a delicious suspicion. Is Tesla preparing a hybrid version with manual and autonomous modes? Because if so, the Model 2 could be more than just accessible. It could be versatile and adaptable to any type of driver. And there's more. This structure we're seeing now, so discreet and polished, may just be the shell of what really matters. The Gen 3 platform. Elon Musk has let slip on several occasions that the secret of the Model 2 lies in the foundation, not the body. And look how interesting. Everything in this new CyberCab points to something modular, simplified, and efficient. It seems Tesla used the CyberCab as a luxury guinea pig to discreetly test what they are already developing for the cheapest car in the company's history. A kind of electric Trojan horse. If this prototype is indeed the embryo of the Model 2, then we are witnessing Tesla's official transition to a new level of mass production. And the most incredible thing is that this is happening without any formal announcement, without fireworks, just a quiet car, driving around with temporary license plates and making drive-through deliveries. For those who closely follow Tesla's steps, this type of discreet behavior is almost always the harbinger of a revolution. Because when Tesla wants to hide something, it's usually because something big is coming soon. Now, think about it. Why is a 100% autonomous car still being tested with a steering wheel? Simple, because the goal isn't to create a single type of car. The game now is to build an entire ecosystem on the same base. This opens up room for different versions of the same model. One for those who still want to drive and another for those who just want to sit back and let the AI do the work. And the best part? This isn't crazy speculation. Musk himself has said, more than once, that Tesla's future platform will be scalable. This means one thing. The Model 2 and the CyberCab are Siamese twins. Another clue that can't be ignored is the location where these tests are taking place. California. It's not just because the weather is good. The region is one of the most demanding in the world regarding automotive legislation. If the prototype passed through there, with a steering wheel and everything, it's because it's already in the real validation phase. And if it's already being validated, it means that the next steps involve only final adjustments before production. Tesla has never been one to do anything without a reason. And this type of movement in the open field usually indicates that something big is about to be launched. And it's when you look more closely at this 2026 cyber cab that the magic begins to appear, but not in the spotlight, rather in the small engineering details. It starts at the rear, which is now slightly higher. This subtle change improves airflow and aids aerodynamic efficiency, meaning more range without changing the battery size. And it doesn't stop there. The rear bumper has been shortened, a move that not only saves material, but also reduces weight. Everything indicates that Tesla is treating every inch of the car as an opportunity to cut costs without compromising performance. The side cameras have also been repositioned. They are now better positioned, optimizing the field of vision for the autonomous driving system. This reinforces the idea that the project is no longer stuck in the concept stage. 
it's moving directly to the assembly lines. The B pillar, which separates the front and rear doors, has been pushed forward. The result? Larger doors and easier entry. A simple detail, but one that makes a huge difference in daily comfort. And when it comes to manufacturing on a global scale, comfort and simplicity are indispensable allies. Another smart change was abandoning the painted tires and exaggerated wheels seen in previous prototypes. Now, the CyberCab is rolling with standard production wheels, the ones that actually go on the road. This change isn't just aesthetic. It represents a phase change. Out with the showroom, in with the factory floor. It's almost as if Tesla is dressing the car in everyday clothes, ready to face the production line shift. This makes it very clear that we are just a few steps away from seeing this model come to life. Even the rearview mirrors, which appear in the current version with that provisional look, are only there to comply with legislation during testing. Because as soon as the vehicle is approved as fully autonomous, these physical mirrors will disappear. In their place, only the integrated cameras. This reduces aerodynamic drag, improves efficiency, and also makes the look cleaner. In other words, everything that is there now is functional or provisional, awaiting the green light from regulatory agencies. And in this game of hiding and revealing, Tesla is silently shaping the identity of the future Model 2. Another point that stands out is how the engineers managed to simplify the entire structure without making the car look cheap. They increased efficiency without sacrificing a modern look. The door design, for example, now has straighter cutouts that are easier to press together. This reduces manufacturing time and the number of parts needed. Tesla is putting into practice that old golden rule of the industry. Fewer components, fewer failures, and lower maintenance costs. And that, let's face it, is exactly what you expect from an entry-level vehicle with premium DNA. Inside, though little has been revealed yet, rumors suggest that Tesla is testing different configurations of seats and panels that could be produced as interlocking modules. This would be a revolution in the assembly line as it would allow the same part to fit into different models. Imagine a panel that works for both the Model 2 and the RoboTaxi. The economies of scale would be absurd. And this type of modular thinking is what separates a regular factory from a gigafactory that produces a car every 30 seconds. The real star behind the CyberCab and the future Model 2 isn't in the bodywork or the headlights. It's in what nobody sees the structure. The famous Gen 3 platform, which is generating buzz in 2026, is the foundation upon which Tesla will build its army of affordable, autonomous, and intelligent vehicles. Unlike previous platforms, this one was designed from the ground up to be truly modular. This means that the same chassis can house a compact hatchback, a robo-taxi, or even a small utility vehicle, a versatile skeleton that adapts to the necessary shape with minimal alteration. Tesla's promise with this platform is audacious, to reduce production costs by more than 50% compared to the current Model 3 and Model Y. And this isn't just talk. The Gen 3 is built with fewer parts, fewer screws, and less assembly time. Tesla is using advanced techniques like gigacasting, which literally prints huge car parts as a single piece instead of hundreds. This not only speeds up the process, but also eliminates points of failure and reduces future maintenance costs. The Model 2, of course, will be the first to reap the benefits of this lean engineering. This modularity also opens up a huge range of regional possibilities. Imagine a version of the Model 2 adapted for Brazil, with greater heat resistance, slightly raised suspension, and lower import costs or a compact urban European version focused on range and practicality, or even a basic model for delivery fleets in Asia without a steering wheel and with a completely simplified interior? All of this is possible with the Gen 3 because it was designed as a kind of industrial wild card. And the most impressive thing, adapting one model to another requires few adjustments to the production line. Furthermore, this architecture allows the car to be assembled 
in virtually any gigafactory in the world. Tesla no longer needs to reinvent the wheel every time it launches a new vehicle. With Gen 3, it only needs to adapt the software and some components, keeping the main skeleton intact. This facilitates not only production, but also maintenance, parts standardization, and global technical support. What was once a logistical puzzle now becomes a global-scale assembly game. And it is this type of engineering that makes a $25,000 car viable. Another surprising point is how this platform communicates directly with the software. The structure was designed from the beginning to integrate sensors, cameras, cables, and circuit boards in an optimized way. This means less weight, less interference, and greater energy efficiency. It's as if the car were an extension of Tesla's artificial brain. Everything fits together. Everything communicates. Everything is designed to run with the least possible friction. And when a car's body and brain speak the same language, it becomes something far more sophisticated than a simple means of transportation. And it's not just about cost and adaptation. The Gen 3 platform is also a leap in sustainability. Fewer parts means less waste, less water usage in factories, and a drastically reduced carbon footprint. The production model that Tesla is proposing with this new base is something that can be replicated not only for cars, but for the entire automotive industry. It's almost as if the company is offering a new standard for the sector, a kind of Gen 3 protocol that other automakers will have to scramble to catch up to avoid becoming obsolete. While the Gen 3 skeleton supports the body of the Model 2, the brain that will bring the car to life is already in advanced testing, and it's called FSD version 14. This autonomous driving system, which started as a premium feature, is now being molded to fit perfectly into affordable vehicles. What's striking is that Tesla isn't just improving what already existed. It's literally rewriting how a car thinks, sees, and reacts. And all this with a very clear objective, to make autonomous driving as natural as breathing. FSD V14 has already begun to be implemented in Cybertrucks. Large vehicles with complex geometry and cameras in different positions than the rest of the fleet. This was a huge challenge for artificial intelligence because it had to relearn how to understand the world from new angles, new sizes, and new maneuvers. But the most impressive thing is what this adaptation represents. If FSD V14 works on a monster like the Cybertruck, it will excel in a compact car like the Model 2. The scalability of the software became evident, and this is the kind of silent victory that changes the game. Another surprising advancement is that the system can now choose where to park, avoiding debris, trees, and even tires thrown on the road. It also recognizes ambulances, police cars, and even detects roadblocks in real time, without relying solely on GPS. In other words, the car begins to sense the environment like an experienced driver. This shows that FSD is not just a souped-up autopilot, but an intelligent organism in constant evolution, capable of learning from the world and adapting its actions in real time. And the best part? This version of FSD was designed to work in a modular way. This means that the same software can run on cars of different sizes, shapes, and uses, as long as they are connected to Tesla's neural architecture. In the case of the Model 2, this is a blessing. After all, it wouldn't make sense to create a separate system just because the car is cheaper. With FSD V14, Tesla can use the same code, the same brain, in both the top of the line and the most affordable models. This reduces costs, speeds up updates, and ensures consistency across the entire fleet. Furthermore, the system now allows you to choose driving profiles. More aggressive, more cautious, more fluid. This customization transforms the driving experience, or rather, the experience of being driven, into something almost human. And even in unexpected situations, such as heavy rain or camera obstructions, FSD V14 has learned to recover and safely regain control. This is crucial for the Model 2, which will be Tesla's first affordable car aimed at the general public with real potential 
to drive itself in crowded and chaotic urban centers. Another unexpected improvement was the windshield dirt warning system, alerting when the front cameras are compromised. It may seem like a small detail, but this type of refinement is what separates an experimental system from a product ready for the real world. When you think about putting millions of cars on the road with this autonomous brain, every small safety adjustment counts. And the FSD V14 is demonstrating that it is no longer just a technological promise. It's a solid, tested tool, poised to become ubiquitous in the Tesla lineup. What makes FSD V14 so powerful isn't just the software, but the beating heart that powers it. The new Tesla AI5 to AI8 chips. By 2026, Elon Musk has already made it clear that these chips aren't just computer parts. They're artificial brains that connect cars, satellites, and possibly entire cities. The AI5, which will be the first to equip the Tesla Model 2, represents a brutal leap in capability. It's 40 times faster than the AI4, with 8 times more processing power and 9 times more memory. And that changes everything in the game of vehicle autonomy and intelligence. But what's most fascinating is that these chips weren't designed just for cars. Musk revealed that the AI8, for example, will be used in both Tesla's and SpaceX's future orbital data centers. Yes, you read that right. Tesla is preparing a generation of chips that will work both in its cars and in space. This means that the Model 2, even being the most affordable in the line, will carry within it the same technological base that will help process data from satellites orbiting Earth. The idea seems like science fiction, but that's exactly Musk's plan. The AI5 will be manufactured by two giants, Samsung and TSMC, each with slight physical variations to optimize performance and efficiency. The chips will be produced in the United States in advanced facilities in Texas and Arizona, which guarantees not only technological sovereignty, but also speed in logistics. The choice to keep production on American soil is strategic, especially at a time when Tesla needs to rapidly scale up Model 2 production to meet growing global demand for smart and affordable electric vehicles. If the Gen 3 platform is the skeleton and the FSD V14 is the brain, the AI5 chip is the central nervous system. It's what allows the car to think, see, predict movements, and react in real time. With it, the Model 2 will be able to run with the same intelligence as a Model S Plaid, but costing almost a quarter of the price. This democratization of processing power is one of the most revolutionary elements of the project. Tesla isn't just making cars cheaper. It's making accessible a technology that, until yesterday, seemed restricted to supercomputers on wheels. Another brilliant feature of these chips is their energy efficiency. The AI5 delivers three times more performance per watt, meaning it consumes less battery power to do much more. In compact cars like the Model 2, this represents a huge advantage. It means more range, less heat generation, and greater stability. And best of all, with less need for cooling, the car's interior design can also be simpler, lighter, and cheaper. Every small technical improvement in these chips translates into direct gains for the end consumer. And it doesn't stop there. The AI6, which will follow, is already under development and should allow the car to interact with external systems in real time, without relying on the cloud. 